Hello everybody, my name is Chris and today I have a bit of a different video. As you can see, we have some big stuff coming and it's all about my new tripod right here. Now the main reason why I'm talking about this today is because for the last few years I was actually using the Zeroe T025X tripod with the ball head that comes with the set. However, you can see a clear problem right there, and that is that I cannot look through the viewfinder when I am standing up, and even worse, whenever I want to film myself, I cannot do that properly because it's not at eye level. Now, if I were to only take photos, that may not be a problem. However, I also film myself, I film other people, and sometimes I want to be able to film while standing up. And now with a trip coming up where we want to film with two cameras and also want to be able to film standing up, that's when I went out and looked for a better tripod solution for myself and of course for the whole project. And there I came across the National Geographic ball head tripod and I don't think that there's actually any kind of better name for this, but you will find the links to both of these tripods of course in the description down below. Now the major difference you can immediately spot of course is the height. When I take out the camera of the Siri there and put it up on top here, you can already see there is a major difference right there. It's actually so good or so high that I don't even have to lean down to look through the viewfinder. I literally can just step up to the camera, look through the viewfinder. It is for me the perfect height. Now I'm about 182 centimeters in height. And of course, if I had shoes on, maybe that's two or three centimeters more. But this here is the perfect height for me. And I think it's around 165 centimeters, but we'll get to the technical specifications and maximum height and all of those things in a moment. Now, there are, of course, tons of differences between these two tripods. And it is not just about the weight or the height. There are also functional differences. For example, the National Geographic one can be used as a monopod, which is not possible with the Siri, or I just don't have found out how you would actually do that. Oh, hi, feature Chris here. Quick update about the whole monopod situation with especially the height and stuff like that. I later found out through a bit of a hack because this is not advertised for this specific tripod model, but if you wanna choose this as a monopod and unscrew the leg, and then you take out the center column and to do so you just unscrew the bottom piece right here, which is the hook for your backpack for a counterweight. You take out the center column from the rest of the tripod. This goes into your backpack, your storage whatsoever. There's actually a second screw with the tripod. And as you can see here, this is kind of like those tripod screws that you also find at the top right here. Now the described way to assemble this monopod is to actually take off the head right here and there you will reveal one of those screws right here and that can then be used to mount the tripod head to the monopod leg. However, I found that there's actually a second screw in the package of the National Geographic and then you can actually take that screw and make sure to use the tripod end right there to start screwing it in here and you screw that all the way in there. And then you can take the leg and screw it there as well because the threading is actually the same. So now what you have is the center column. And of course you can still extend that. So you have the center column right there. You have the head and then you have the leg which now can be extended like so. And now you have a really long monopod which goes up to 171 centimeters. So this is once more over standing height and it actually, you can see it goes really high. Now I don't know how durable this connection will be with this because obviously there's no shafting or something like that. Maybe it would be an idea if you just wanna use this a long time, maybe to put some gaff tape around this to make it more stable on this joint right here. However, you're usually not bringing any force sideways on a monopod and I would just not recommend slinging it over your head with a heavy thing on top and just carrying it like this because again, there's this joint which I don't know how durable this is going to be. But I wanted to include this here because I was kind of underwhelmed by the monopod height and now with the center column hack and also with the screw that you can carry around quite easily, you have a really long monopod and that works wonders if you just wanna use that to stabilize your video footage or stuff like that. 
The only thing that you should be aware of is when you want to take it apart, you unscrew this. There's not really a way to take this out if you really tightened it. So bring a tool if you want to be able to remove this again and bring it back to the normal mode so that you can have your backpack screw at the bottom right here. But of course, if you just want to use monopod mode and tripod mode, you can also just leave that screw right in there as you remount this into the center column like so. And that way you have it with you at all times. And now with that information, let's go back to the main video. Then you have different ball heads, which we'll look into details. And of course, you also have the middle console right here, which with the Siri, you can actually remove. And then you have all the screws and everything right here built into the whole contraption. So you can actually remove and unscrew the middle console or the center column, and you can have all of that lower. This can be helpful because with the Siri, the lowest the center column can go is like this. And you have, of course, the ability to close down all the legs. However, you still have the center column as a module that can introduce some kind of wobble into your photography or video work. Now on the National Geographic, it's a bit different. You can lower the center column just like you can here. But on top of that, you can also lower it all the way down right here. Now there's also a second alternative to this where you can unscrew the ball head and you can put a little piece in here which basically removes or replaces the center column. However, that is very unpractical in my opinion because then you don't have the flexibility and you have to carry around a bit of a piece of plastic with a screw on top. Now the main benefit of being able to do this with a center column in comparison to this is that you don't have the wobble that you can get from a center column like this. However, there is a second one and that is that you can actually have this piece unscrewed here at the bottom where you have the rucksack holder for the ability to have a counterweight to more stabilize the whole tripod. And you can actually unscrew this here at the bottom and then you can reverse the center column so that you can actually take shots even lower to the ground with the camera basically hanging from the tripod. These both have Arca Swiss mounts and for me that's absolutely crucial. I'm not going to use any ball head or mounting solution for my camera that is not Arca Swiss compatible because I do not want to work with multiple different kinds of mounts. I do not want to unscrew the plate that is screwed to the bottom of my camera. This sits there, I have the Peak Design clip so I can carry it on my rucksack like so and I want this to fit everywhere. So that is always a major consideration for me when I do choose any type of tripod or ball head or mounting solution. So that's one thing that both of these have. They both have a ball head. They both can switch into the portrait position. So you can unscrew this and then you have this in portrait mode possibility. You also have two screws and you can twist and turn both of these ball heads and one thing while we are at it with the ball heads is that the National Geographic one is actually made more out of plastic. So all the dials right here and all the knobs and twisty things are all made of plastic. But with the Siri, all of those are made of metal and it feels more rugged and more stable. And on top of that, you have a quick release kind of pin right here where you basically pin it down or twi uh, press a button and then it goes down, you slide in your camera and then you tighten it off. And that way you have it protected when you don't have the uh, screw all the way tightened. It cannot slide out that easily because there is the safety pin. Now on the other hand with the National Geographic one, there's a screw sticking up <laughs> at the bottom or out of this uh, tripod ball head plate and you actually have to fully unscrew to be able to take it out because you can only put it in on an angle. You cannot slide it out to the front or the back. So you always have to untighten the screw all the way to be able to remove the camera from the tripod. Now I am actually going to be replacing the ball head on this. I'm gonna use this here in the studio, but for travel use, I much prefer the ability to have this button release and I am purchasing basically another Siri tripod ball head which has this button ball head situation going and I will see how that also compares in terms of weight and all of those good things. Now for the most part I think that pretty much concludes the differences of these two tripods aside from the size and weight comparison. But I also remember I mentioned that there's a rucksack hook down here at the bottom of the National Geographic tripod but on the other side with the Siri 
you actually also have a bit of a metal hook or a metal pin at the bottom here where you can have some type of maybe carabiner with a key ring attached there. However, it does feel more sturdy with the National Geographic and I actually removed the key ring because it was always metal on metal just clinking around and you do not have that problem with the National Geographic version right here. But now let's talk about the weight and size of these two tripods because that of course is a major thing when you are choosing a travel tripod and especially a travel tripod because every single gram counts when you are packing your backpack. Now here we have the legs with center column that was 664 grams on the Siri and 1002 grams on the National Geographic tripod. The legs without the center column is 596 grams and then we have 885 grams. And with the monopod version you have 251. Now the head itself on the National Geographic weighs 275 grams and the head of the Siri weighs 202 grams and fully assembled with everything on it we have 866 with the Siri and 1277 grams for the National Geographic. Now that's a fully assembled weight difference of about 411 grams and to be honest that is quite a lot considering it's half a kilo basically but I am hoping that I can get this a little lower maybe 100 grams or so with a different ball head and then I am very much willing to take the extra weight for the additional height that this tripod gives me. And speaking of height obviously we have the packed height with the head and the center column so basically the full package packed down to the smallest factor and that is a 33 centimeter length of the Siri and a 36 centimeter length of the National Geographic which is quite remarkable considering that it goes that much higher. Then we have the maximum height without the head so basically when I extend the center column right here and then I also extend this center column but only measure it up to this point right there because it may be different for the head that you are using and there we have a maximum height for this Siri here at 129 centimeters and then we have a maximum height of 149 centimeters for the National Geographic. Now the monopod goes only up to 109 centimeters without the head on top so on the National Geographic monopod that's 109 centimeters. And now to the max height with the head so basically measuring at the top of the base plate right here we have 137 centimeters for the Siri and 157 centimeters of the National Geographic. And now because I have this right here and I was so surprised that I can actually just look through this camera lens right there or better yet the viewfinder without even bowing down or bending my knees in any kind of way at least barefoot uh, the max height of the viewfinder on the Canon EOS R was measured to be 145 centimeters on the Siri and 165 centimeters on the tripod of the National Geographic. The lowest height with the center column so going all the way down with the center column and making all the legs short as possible but also making them basically like this where you can actually lock them in place so you have this really wide span and of course you can also bring the legs in to basically make this as small as possible. Now that was the test for the lowest height with the center column and there we have 39 centimeters on both of them. And lastly with the lowest height without the center column so removing the center columns right here and of course with the National Geographic we have the special thingy that we can place right here and so we have 18 centimeters on the Siri with the head as the lowest position without the center column and we have 19 centimeters on the National Geographic. Now that's the height differences and how both of these fare. Now my personal conclusion is if I only do photography and occasionally do video or only do video work where I am not in front of the camera I would probably stick with the Siri because it has great features it has a great ball head it is super lightweight at something around 880 grams it packs nicely and is overall a really nice tripod I really love this for the travels that I have done with this 
However, with the added height that this provides me, I am very much willing to take the extra weight because I am more and more filming myself or other people in front of the camera. And I wanna be able to look into the lens, record, twist it around, look into this camera's eyes and be able to literally have eye contact. Now this may not necessarily be necessary to be able to have this at the highest possible setting. Maybe something like this would be enough as well, but it's still far from where it would be on the Siri. And I'm just really happy that I now have this opportunity to be able to place a tripod wherever I wanna go, on travels, in the studio, in this apartment even, and be able to just film without having to worry about finding a place where I can put the other tripod on top of, or maybe push the legs in a little bit so that I possibly could have this a little bit higher, but then it's super unsecure, and I don't know if I wanna trust that construction with a couple thousands of euros. Now, with all that said, I hope this video was helpful for you to learn more about the National Geographic tripod as well as the Siri tripod that I have here. Of course, I have links to both of these in the description down below so that you can check them out yourself and maybe purchase one for your next trip. As I've mentioned, for photography only and without the worry of the height, if you don't wanna necessarily have to look through straight up, or if you don't want to worry about more weight, then of course the Siri is a great buy, but also if you're going for the height and you wanna be able to look into the lens, you wanna be able to speak directly into the camera, then of course I would go with the National Geographic tripod because it gives you that extra height with not that much extra weight. Now, if you have any questions around this, you can leave those in the comment section down below. If this video was helpful for you, then I would appreciate a thumbs up. That always helps out. Share it with someone that might find it interesting. And with all that said, I hope you have an amazing day. Have fun on your next trip with the right tripod for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.